Assembling the Starship Enterprise stand on Monster Hobbies, let's build it! Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Urslescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Well, tonight on our Let's Build It segment, we are going to be looking at the stand to support our model of the Starship Enterprise from AMT. I know this isn't the most exciting build in our entire build-up, but it is one of the more important ones because without this stand, well, where is your ship going to go? Also, I want to show some of the early techniques, and the stand is one of those things where if you make a little mistake on it, it's easy to correct, whereas if you make a mistake on some of your other parts, that might not be so easy. So let's go down to our bench and begin our, our uh, build of this stand. All right, here we are down at our build station, and I actually brought out my old uh, work table. My dad made this for me way back when I was young in the 80s which goes right along with this time period when it was new and I was building these kits. Now, as you can see, it's got room for all the tools, although I don't have all my tools here. Some of them I have in this box right here. I made this one so I could take tools to the store with me. And now let's begin by opening up our kit and taking out the parts that we need. got our saucer and here's the stand right here <laughs> hang on there you can see it on my arm well first thing we want to do is we can twist this off here that's gonna be okay Oop. and we lost the cap for our warp engine but anyway there's our stand now let's put it here and then go down and have a look all right Here's our stand, and what I'm going to start by doing is using these side cutters here, and I'm just going to carefully clip these pieces out. Now, I've built lots of these stands in the past, but really what I forgot to do is show you the instructions, because that's kind of important if this is your first time ever building one of these, so that you know how this thing goes together and you don't glue something upside down. So let's get those instructions. So here we have our instructions for the stand, and I've located it here. And now, as you can tell, there's three pieces. The front of it has this little button at the top. The back doesn't. And then it shows this bar with the angles going upward. So there's the bar there. We don't want to have it this way because that would be upside down. So we really want it like this. And this one has the pin at the top. So this one would be the front. And that means that through the process of elimination, this one is the back. And you'll notice if you turn this over, there's a rectangular area there and that is where this top of the stand is going to go. Well, got to go the right way. Okay, let's take a look at the stand in more detail. So here's our three pieces of the stand and as you can tell, I mean, they look pretty smooth and pretty nice until you turn them over. When you turn them over You'll notice all these funny circular bumps on here. See? It's almost like uh, pimples or something. So, obviously these do not look too attractive. So we want to get rid of them. And what these are is, in the injection molding process, they sometimes put these pins in here um, to provide a little more plastic in that area or something. Or maybe for support so it doesn't warp as much. I'm not quite sure. However, these are injection molding marks. And what we want to do is, we've got our sandpaper block here. And we want to get rid of them. So, the best way to do this 
is to do something they call cross sanding. So with cross sanding, you want to, instead of just going like this, da 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 right? You want to actually, like see this angle here? You want to follow that angle for a little while. And then you want to go in the reverse direction, down this way. And by doing that, you will put in sand marks that first go this way, and then come back this way. That's called cross sanding, when you make those X's in your sanding. What this does is it will eliminate it this way, and then correct it this way, so that your result should be 100% dead flat. Now I'm just going to start sanding to test this theory with you. Okay, and then we go this way for the cross. And now this way again. And back for the cross. Now the other, th once you get the cross sanding done, you can smooth it by going your regular back and forth. But now you can see that those bumps are completely gone and completely smooth. So the reason why I have this double sided is now I'm going to take out the rough sanding marks with the smoother paper to make this a really nice smooth backing to our stand. And there you have it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sand off the rest of these bumps and I'm going to let you do that too at home and then we'll come back and I'll show you some more on how to do the stand. All right, there is our stand all sanded down. Now if you did it right, it should look just like mine, nice and smooth, no little surface bumps. And now the next thing is, the bumps here, where we uh, cut it off the parts tree, those have to be dealt with. So what we can do is take our sandpaper here and just sand them off until they're nice and level with the rest of our our piece here. And then you can get the one here. Always remember to to follow the curvature there. So that that's gone. And check it with your finger, make sure there's no bump sticking up. And there's another one there. I can hear my kids upstairs. Okay, and there's that. And we got this one. And there should be one more on here. Oh yeah, there it is. Just around this curve. All right. Now always feel with your finger and check. And if it doesn't feel like there's any more of those bumps, then you have got this bump free. All right, so what I think I'm going to do just to make this a little easier to see is I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to put this purple paper down on my workbench. I think one sheet will do. Oh yeah, that's way better. Okay. Oh, I found a little spot there too. Okay, so just perfecting this out a bit. There is our stand, the front, or the back, I mean, because it doesn't have the pin. And the brace. 
and the other side. Now, if you, on mine, I know the camera won't pick this up, but there's little bits of plastic stuff and some little scratches. So I'm just going to take my fine sandpaper and just sand this out a little using our cross sanding technique. Try to get some of the factory scratches out of it. Okay. Yeah. Now the other good thing with the sandpaper is that you're creating a little tooth in the plastic for when you spray paint this or even just brush paint it so that the plastic will or the paint will be able to bond to the plastic. And I'll do the same on this back one. And there we go. Now, I don't know if you've actually noticed this at all, but this is actually the Star Trek symbol. If you go like that. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so now the next thing I want to show you is with your hobby knife. Now I should actually sand this side without the hobby knife for just a sec. Okay, this will smooth it up. All right, so now the final bit to our preparation of these parts is if you rub your finger this way, you can hear it, eh? That's a sharp ridge on there. So what we want to do is we want to drag our hobby knife along this. This is a technique called adzing. And uh, it basically rounds this corner off a little tiny bit to make it smoother. And this will help with the paint application. So I don't know if you can pick this up a lot. Looks like my camera's kind of having a little hard time focusing. But uh, basically, basically what I'm doing here is, I'm gonna use my finger here. So there's my finger. And we're just going to pretend this is a blade. So, if you look, you can see the knife is coming along at that angle. And then I'm going to roll it like this. Move it across. And then like that. So that you get a rounded edge instead of a square edge. So that's essentially what I'm doing here. So there's, oops, there's a blade that way. Then I'm rotating it and like flat along this way a rotation final rotation so now when you move your finger over it you don't hear that same sh -sh -sh kind of sound and if you do just give it a little more so there's that and i'm gonna let you guys do the triangular pieces and we'll get to gluing this thing together right after we do these ones. All right, so now we have our three pieces and they have been sanded down on both sides and they've been adzed on the edges to make the edges round. And uh, one thing I'm gonna say, final thing about adzing, is that if these had that sharp edge, uh, the paint doesn't like to stick to sharp objects, so it'll actually drip off of that and leave like a ridge line. So by adzing this and making it round, we uh, allow the paint to stick on a curve, which is a lot better for it. So now I'm going to pretend that this is 1983, and we're going to use our old testers model glue, the tried and true. 
Now I know some better stuff has come on the market since that time, but this stuff still works, so why not use it? So what I'm going to do is carefully get some glue out and go along this edge. And now do you remember which way this is supposed to go? Up or down? Well, it's actually supposed to be like this. So there is the back of our bar. And now we'll put a bit of glue to the front. And put the cap back on. <laughs> and now that's glued together. Now we got to put it on the table like this, and we want to check to make sure that these are perfectly, uh, what do you call it, parallel to each other, both of these ends going in this way. Now, really, in order to do that, we should move the camera. All right, so in order to see this better, I've actually taken the camera off the tripod. And now if I move this over, you can see that I've pretty much got these parallel to each other. Although it does look like they're sloping a bit forward on the one side, but it's not really the case. And that's how you'd want your, your stand. Perfect 90 degree from that pole, which should be, should be a 90 degree right there and a 90 degree right there. And that would make it perfectly parallel. So here we have the fully assembled Star Trek Starship Enterprise stand and these angles are in perfect parallel arrangement to each other. And now the instructions say that you can paint the stand black, although you don't really have to paint the stand if you don't want to. Um, but if you really wanted to make this look nice you can put a gold insert into this shape here and you'd have that Star Trek logo. That they have on their shirts. And uh, now you want to leave the glue in here to dry for 24 hours because it'll make a nice solid bond in there and you'll need it because the full weight of your starship is coming down on top of this stand so it'll hold it in place if it's nice and sturdy on your shelf. Well I hope you enjoyed this episode of Let's Build It where we built our stand for our starship Enterprise. And tune in next week when we will start to put our saucer section together for our top of the Enterprise. And if you would like to see what tools we used for this episode, please click up here. If you would like to see a review of the model kit, please click down here. If you'd like to see a review of the Klingon ship, please click up here. And don't forget to subscribe to us right down here so that we can make some better videos for you. Also visit us on the web at www.monster-hobbies.ca And we look forward to seeing you in the next Let's Build It!